Now, where do you want to look during the flare? It works best to look just to the left of the cowling rather than trying to look directly over the nose. Besides, if you're trying to look over the nose, there's a really good chance that you'll land on the nose wheel. You'd hate that, and so would your airplane. You want to look about as far ahead as if you were driving a car at the same speed. If you look too close in, you'll distort your view of the runway and you'll tend to flare too high. Why? Well, when you look too close in, things begin to blur. And blurring like that is one of the signals your brain uses to tell you to flare. So if you're looking close in, you'll be too high when things start to blur and you'll flare too high. On the other hand, when you look too far down the runway, you don't see the same detail as when you're looking at the proper distance. In this case, you'll tend to flare too low. You might even fly it into the ground. When you look too far out, you just don't get the cues to tell you when you're too low. So you want to look in the middle distance, beyond the point where moving things tend to blur, but close enough in that your brain is getting good information to work with. But just as when you're driving a car, keep your gaze moving around and don't fixate at one particular distance. Another thing, once you start to flare, you should never push the elevator control forward. If you flared too high, you can maintain your climb pitch attitude and ease the airplane down by adding just a little bit of power. But if you move the wheel forward, you run the risk of landing hard on the nose wheel. And that's almost certain to cause damage. The main wheels are for landing on and the nose wheel is for steering with, period. You don't want any weight on that nose wheel during touchdown. It's just not built to take it in the landing.